In this playlist, we want to talk about linked lists, and we're kind of going to introduce a new abstract data type here. This is the ADT of the list, or in Scala terms, the sequence. In Java, it would be called a, a list. It's a very standard ADT. It's a step up from our stack and our queue, which were the previous abstract data types we had looked at. Stacks and queues just had a very simple add and remove, and you really didn't have control over what you were adding and removing. With the list or the sequence, you have the ability to get random elements, to insert random elements, and to remove random elements. That is the, the basic idea. Uh, and they, if they're, you know, often they're mutable, and then you can uh, set values in them as well. So you know, we could create, if we wanted, a, so let's go ahead and let's create a new package called linked list because that's the, our main new topic in here and we could make a new trait I'll call it list ADT I'm not just gonna call it list because well that would conflict with the list type in Scala which I really really don't want to do and of course like our stack and our queue this is going to take a type parameter because there is these can hold some type and we don't really care what type it is it could be a list of ints or strings or students, or colors, whatever. The methods that we would want to have for this, and this is kind of in a generic sense, would be the ability to get an element from it. And the elements are specified by their index. Okay, so there's an integer index that we use for a position. Typically, these start at zero, but there have been languages where, where they don't start there. Uh, we have the ability to set values index which is an int and this would return unit it would also likely give us or we also need to pass in the value that we are setting at that index we should be able to insert an element at a particular index and once again we can specify a value and we should be able to remove from an index and this one probably returns the value that we remove something like that this is a very generic description of a list now of course if I wanted to make this more Scala like I don't have a get method I have an update or sorry an apply method and instead of set I would have an update and that would allow me to do indexing to to get values out and to do what looks like an assignment in order to update values. So, but the basic idea, and once again, the abstract data type doesn't tell you how this is working, it just tells you what is going on. And the basic idea here is, is the same, uh, whether you call these get and set or apply and update. This is a, uh, a collection that indexes things by numeric values in a particular order so order matters and you can get uh, and and insert and remove at random locations okay. that's the the concept behind the list ADT the thing with ADTs is they are abstract and so they don't tell you how you're going to to do this um, I mentioned earlier that in Scala this is called the sequence and there is a trait called sequence that we'll look at uh, in a in a later video in this playlist, where we'll we'll talk about exactly what that can do. But we've dealt with two sequences. We've dealt with both arrays and lists, and it turns out that those are you know, give us fundamental different ways, fundamentally different ways of storing things. So, what do those look like in memory? So, if I were to draw out what an array looks like in memory it would be something like this. So you have a whole bunch of elements and they are stacked one after the other. Let's see, I think I can get one more doubling in there. So we have 16 elements here in our, whoops, that's didn't quite get that right, there. So we have 16 elements in this hypothetical array and we could store our values in each one the elements of an array are contiguous 
Uh, now, of course, in the Scala model, generally each one of these is actually a reference. It points to some other object somewhere in memory. But these are laid out in order. They're all the same size. And therefore, if I ask for the element at index 4, this would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, we can get to it pretty much immediately. So you could implement this ADT using an array. Uh, that is left kind of as, as an exercise for the student to do, but we'll discuss a little bit about how we would do this. First, in a, first thing is we would not make an array that is exactly the same size as our sequence of elements. So if I had five elements, let's say my I had the values 7, 2, 6, 3, I skipped one in there. There we go. Okay, so I have five elements right there. What I would do is I would store the value five that keeps track of that, but my array could be bigger than this. So it has a larger capacity than its size. That way when I wanted to add something, if I were just adding it to the end, I could just put it here. So I could, you know, put the value eight there and I don't have to reallocate memory because every time that we reallocate memory, we have to make a bigger array copy the values over. The copying is an order in operation. And as we saw with the stack in the queue, we don't want to do that very often. So we'd have a large capacity for our size. When we filled it up, we would double the size or we double the capacity and, and then we'd keep going. But this has other operations. So we, we're not just adding to the end as I was showing there. Uh, that would be constantly inserting at the end element. Uh, the ability to do an apply and an update is literally just to index into the array and then to update the array. Those are simple. But what about insert and remove? Okay. How would I insert something? So if I wanted to insert the value 5 at index 2, what do I have to do here? Well, the answer is I have to copy all of these values down. So to help illustrate this, we can make a copy of our array here, uh, but the eight doesn't get to stay there. So we're going to have to copy our eight from there to there. And so the eight goes there. We're gonna copy our three back an element. Now, if, I, in, if this is a mutable list or a mutable sequence, I'm not actually going to make a copy. I draw the copy to help illustrate to you the the way that this would work but inside of memory I wouldn't go through and do that overhead so the 9 is here and of course in order to do this I have basically have to have a for loop it's walking backwards through this array until I get to the location that I was going to insert something we have one more element here our 6 comes down to there and then we could store now the 5 in that location okay. But that means the insert took order in operations. Okay, now, I didn't have to go all the way back to the beginning. And it, maybe I didn't have to move anything. Maybe I was just inserting at the end. But on average, I would have to move half the things. And because that's n over 2, that's order in, because the constant in front gets, gets thrown out. What about remove? Well, a very similar thing happens. What if I wanted to remove the 2 now? So once again, for illustrative purposes, I will copy our array, though in, in reality I would just be potentially mutating values in there. So the 2 has to go away. In order to do that, we copy the 5 over the 2. And then we copy the 6 over the 5. And then we copy the 9 over the 6. We'd copy the 3 over the 9 and we would copy the eight over the three. Uh, and then depending upon what we're doing, we might leave this here or we might actually clear that space. Uh, for our implementations, we probably won't clear things out. Um, we'll just wait until at some point the, the whole thing goes away and the garbage collector can deal with everything. But once again, the remove is an order in operation and it's order in in the number of memory moves that it has to do. Remember when we talk about order, we have to kind of talk about what operation it is that we're, that we're dealing with. Uh, so 
you know, in this case, it's not just we're reading order in memory, we're actually writing order in memory, we're changing order in things. So we could make this ADT with an array, and it's just that the insert and remove methods would have loops inside of them, and those loops would potentially move around order in objects, either to make room to insert something new, or to take out an element and cover it up. And that is the behavior that we would expect from a sequence implementation using an array. And once again, we're not gonna write code for this. It's left as an exercise for you to actually go ahead and you know consider doing that implementation um, to see exactly what it is that you have to do and how that's going to work. We'll come back and we'll see, we'll contrast this with the idea of a linked list and see how the linked list is fundamentally different from the array in the work that we have to do for these operations.